Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. Let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people with real stories. The struggle to play it forward. Episode number 632 is with the Bible Answer Man. The book, the complete Bible answer book. I am doing great. What a beautiful day it is today because, I mean, I'm telling you, th- this is a moment that I've been praying for. It's something that it, it's a blessing because we get to ask the questions and question the answers. And you know what? You've been blessed with the opportunity to answer a lot of questions inside this book. Yeah, I really have. Uh, and, and, and I love the way in which you phrase that because it has been a blessing and it has been an opportunity for me to do that. It comes obviously out of my life's work. I've had the privilege of uh, being in studio for some 40 years, not quite 40 years, but close to 40 years, uh, answering people's questions. And that's been a great opportunity for me to learn because uh, oftentimes, as you might imagine, people ask me questions I don't know the answer to. And I, I simply say, that's a great question. I'm not sure exactly how to answer that question in the most compelling fashion. Let me research and return. And in the process, I've had the opportunity of over four decades to learn a tremendous amount and then to be able to give those answers. And I think the real issue in giving answers is to do it with gentleness and with respect. Um, uh, Again, recognizing that uh, we are called to give a defense of the faith, but never in an arrogant fashion. Yeah. I love the way that you say that it's an opportunity to learn because that's that's what I learned in martial arts. I learned more standing on the sidelines, watching and studying, observing and then activating. And, And that's what's so beautiful about your heart and your activation here. Yeah, what a great analogy. Uh, I I love the analogy of sports with respect to uh, uh, Christian disciplines. Uh, You 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 in 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 Scripture recognize that we are taught to gymnasize ourselves to godliness. So the the church is in part a spiritual gymnasium in which we exercise spiritual disciplines. We grow in those disciplines and we become stronger. Virtually, just like in the martial arts, you grow in your ability to use those arts in the most compelling and powerful fashion. You speak of the resurrection and the afterlife itself, but one of the things that people don't understand, or for some reason they feel blocked by it, and that is the lives it took to bring Jesus to life. Yes, um, it, it, it is a, a very important to recognize that the resurrection is rooted in history and evidence, and that the lives of those people who were with Jesus Christ were utterly transformed by the resurrection. The disciples were at once scared and scattered, but when they saw the resurrected Christ, they became lions of the faith. They were willing to face the tyrant's brandish steel, the lion's gory mane, the fires of a thousand deaths, because they had seen Christ and they knew as certainly as that they had flesh on their bones that they too would rise immortal, imperishable, incorruptible. So when you point to the resurrection, you're pointing to the epicenter of the Christian faith. If Christ is risen from the dead, we have hope. If he is not, St. Paul says, eat, drink, and be merry because tomorrow you die. We will resurrect from the dead, and that resurrection is physical. It points to the very physical nature of the Christian faith. Christian faith is not platonic. It's physical. Uh, We're metaphysical beings. We have a metaphysical aspect to our humanity and a physical aspect to our humanity. But within the Christian faith, there are people that so often denigrate or simply misunderstand the fact that we're going to be resurrected, that there's continuity between the body that is and the body that will be. There was once a time, and that it it was during the lockdown, where where, uh, people around us were were transitioning. And, And I kept writing in my daily journals, where are you, God? Where are you, God? And finally, the answer came. I'm here. Where are you? And that's what I think I love most about this book is that you've got the questions. Somebody is now providing the answers. Yeah, and it's by God's grace. Uh, Again, I've had the privilege to work in an institute where uh, a daily part of my life is learning. 
so I, 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 I always remember that when I answer questions, I do it with gentleness and with respect because I've been given a privilege and a responsibility commensurate with that privilege, but a privilege that a lot of people don't have. And so I, I, I find it to be a grace and a, a, a great gift of God to have been uh, placed in this circumstance to help people by giving them answers to questions that are pressing to them Mm -hmm. at a particular time Mm -hmm. in their life's journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've planted inside my heart is to love and respect all people. And I think that so many people don't understand what that means, all people. But yet in the Bible, it, it clearly states it right here. Jesus meeting the woman at the well. To me, that was Jesus loving all people. Yeah, and uh, again, a brilliant point on your part. I mean, we have to realize, as as you obviously realize, that people are created in the image and likeness of God. Mm -hmm. The Imago Dei, the image of God, means that because we carry that imprimatur, we are to treat people with the most profound respect because they are, again, created in the Imago Dei, in the image of God. But we also realize that people are growing. Uh, They're never static. Uh, And in the Christian worldview, we are called to become more and more God-like, to become ever greater in one glory to another in realizing the nature of God. We never become what God is, but become more and more God-like. And, 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 and then we can experience fellowship in the Holy Trinity. So we need to treat people in a manner commensurate with that belief, and that is always with the most profound dignity. Uh, whether it's a person that you see ODing on the street, uh, a person that is a criminal, uh, we, we, we never... Uh, accept criminal behavior, but we treat people in a way that is commensurate mm-hmm. with the fact that they're created in the image of God. So you even see this when Jesus Christ is being crucified, and you have two thieves hanging on either side of them, uh, of, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And Jesus treats those thieves with great compassion according to their own uh, free will. One thief, according to his will, receives the master, the other rejects him. Wow. Where can people go to listen to you? Because you, you talk about being a broadcaster for 40 years, but I mean, I'm here in Charlotte. Are you on one of the, uh, the, the hymn stations or where, where, where do people find you? Yeah, you can find us on the web at equip.org. That's the easiest place to uh, find us. Uh, you can write us uh, for our schedule, uh, a radio schedule. Also, um, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I also do a Hank Unplugged podcast, oh, nice. uh, which has become exceptionally popular. I do two things on that podcast. I, I interview the most interesting uh, people on the planet. Uh, interesting, informative, inspirational people. But I also do a Hank Unplugged teaching series where I actually, uh, if there's a contemporary issue that's uh, pressing, I actually do a teaching series on that particular issue. Oh, I love where your heart is. We've got to talk again in the future where we get more than just 10 minutes, sir. I'm looking forward to it. Call me anytime. You be brilliant today, okay? (laughs) Thank you.